Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So AMD has a new CPU on the market, the AMD 4700S. Now, this is a very interesting CPU as number one, it's not called Ryzen. Meanwhile, it's a Zen 2 based CPU, but it's not a Ryzen CPU. So that's a little strange. Number two, it comes with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. That, that's kind of strange. We haven't seen that before. And it has a GPU on it that you can't use. So to me, this is actually really interesting because we're really, really close to getting Xbox Series S or X APUs in the desktop market, except for the fact that AMD just couldn't go that one extra step. Especially when GPUs are in such high demand, they're overpriced through the moon. I'm basically selling off anything I can at about four to five times what I paid for them. And it's just nuts. This looked like this was going to be the saving grace for the DIY PC gaming market when I first heard about this last week. However, today, Video Cards has some more information that's not so good. So to me, this seems like a giant missed opportunity, and I want to talk about it with you guys here today as the sentiment of the community seems to be on board with APUs in DIY gaming. So that's what I wanna to talk to you guys about here today. But before we get into it, if you like videos like this, please smash that like button. YouTube is not a big fan of creators that are talking about this stuff anymore, just because it's not that great. And there's not a lot of good news out there. So YouTube's really kind of hurting everybody in this industry right now. So smashing that like button, sharing, subscribing, all that good stuff. It's really the only way that channels like mine and others will be able to flourish during these tough times. So I really do appreciate everybody who supports the channel. So, all right, let's go ahead and check out and see what video cards had to say. All right, so jumping on over here to videocards.com, they have AMD 4700S might be the Xbox Series S slash X APU for PC. Now, obviously that title is gonna grab a lot of attention really fast, especially in this market. However, 4700S, Xbox APU without graphics. So basically they go into a little bit more detail here where the 4700S isn't technically even labeled Ryzen, it's just AMD 4700S. Uh, it's considered AMD Cardinal. It comes on an ITX motherboard. So taking a look at the image here, this is basically what the complete system is being sold as. Uh, you can see that it has a DGPU. This is an RX 550, basically the DGPU version of an iGPU. Um, small little form factor case here, but it's obvious that it's an APU because it doesn't have any DIMM slots. It has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 surrounding the board, just like you see on, you know, the series consoles or basically any APU console based thing that we've seen for a long time now. So yeah, this is very clearly one of those two systems. They believe that it's probably a series X. It could be either one, honestly. Looking at the promotional material, you see 4700S, 16 gigs, and then RX 550, which it's probably because it's the only GPU that AMD can, that miners aren't gonna want, which is pretty funny when you think about it. Uh, eight nanometers or eight core, 16 threads, seven nanometers, and two, up to four gigahertz. Um, they do go ahead and talk about the fact that the Series S goes up to 3.6 and the Series X goes up to 3.8 gigahertz. Obviously, any Zen 2 based CPU is going to be able to hit four, actually probably beyond four gigahertz. They just clock them down to hit power targets in the consoles. So that's uh, that's not really that big of a deal. Ironically enough, they show this picture in the marketing material. That's right from Microsoft, which is pretty funny. And then they have some benchmarks and stuff down here. That's not really the big deal. Uh, to me, the big thing here is the fact that they got rid of the iGPU. This kind of makes sense for two reasons. One, probably due to the fact that it's Microsoft's technology, they probably weren't allowed to sell the APU because it would directly compete with both Microsoft's consoles and probably violate some sort of agreement that they have. Regardless, without the iGPU, this just feels like a missed opportunity to me. All right, so th this is clearly a repurposed Series X or S chip. They thought it was a Series X chip. It could be an S. It, it could be either one. Um, their big reasoning was, well, it has 16 gigs of RAM. Well, you take a Series S chip, instead of using eight one gig chips, you use eight two gig chips. Voila, you got 16 gigs. You could literally take a Series S, desolder the RAM, solder GDDR6 two gig modules on there, 
poof, you now have a Series S with 16 gigs. It, it's that simple. Uh, obviously, on a Series S, it would give you no performance benefit, but if you wanted to, I suppose you could do that. Um, so that's it could go either way here. Regardless, obviously, the fact that it does not have the integrated graphics, that's the, the big sticking point. In today's market, an APU at the level of either of these, basically an RX 580, which would be the Series S, if you wanted to put it in desktop terms, or RX 5500 XT, if you want to think of it that way, either one, uh, that performance level, that those GPUs are $500 right now, by the way. RX 580, 8 gigs, $500. So that's a $500 discrete graphics card here today as I'm writing this. I looked it up earlier today because I'm like, wow, that's ridiculous. Um, and then you have the Series X chip, which is basically on par with the 6700 XT, which I've not checked how much those are going for. But even MSRP, that's $500. So likely, I don't know, a thousand bucks, I'd say right now, somewhere in that ballpark. In today's market, th those prices are unacceptable. Let's be honest. If you needed a graphics card and you wanted that level of performance, nobody's actually going to pay for that. Anybody that's actually paying these prices, they're mining on them and they see some sort of profit and value in them. So for anybody out there wanting to build a PC or maybe your graphics card died or maybe one of your family members wants to get into PC gaming, you really have no options. So if AMD were to come out with that level of APU, obviously for mining, some of them would get scooped up, but realistically, not many, especially if they remove the PCIe expansion slot, just no expansion slot at all. Uh then there would be almost no use for miners. Yeah, it, it could mine a little bit, but the price to performance, I don't know. Regardless, I just don't see that being an avenue that miners would opt for if there was any other possibilities, in my opinion. Now, systems like this usually meet resistance in the do-it-yourself PC gaming market for a few reasons. One, you can't upgrade the RAM, it just is what it is. However, people forget using 256-bit GDDR6 is infinitely faster than you know your standard system memory. So there are gonna be applications out there that will perform significantly better with this memory than using standard memory. There are actually applications that will also perform worse. But as we know, when it comes to gaming, the GDDR6, it's better. And to me, that's really what I'm seeing. I went through all the comments over on video cards on this one, and everybody seemed pretty excited until they're like, uh, but no GPU. There seems to be a large enough market out there that don't want super high-end, super expensive, super big, super power-hungry graphics cards. The older I get, the smaller I want my PC to be. Typically, I personally don't like newer games. They're just not good. Realistically, you can just go play a game from 10 years ago. It's got all the same features, and it's probably better. That's my opinion. Now, people in my age bracket are the top earners in the world. I'm, I'm almost 40, between 40 and 50. That's when you're at your top earning periods. And that market seems to be split into two categories. You either have the people that are like, no, I want a game, you know, I want to play the latest games. I want all the RTX. I want all the features. I want everything. So they buy the 3090s. They have the most disposable income. And then you have people on my end of the spectrum that just aren't that interested in the newer games but still are interested in the technology and instead would rather see things get smaller and smaller and cheaper and cheaper. Something like a Raspberry Pi, for example, to me is very exciting because if that was like four or five times faster than what it is, which it should be in the next couple of years, that might be the last piece of technology that I need. And it's something this small, it costs less than a hundred bucks and it does all the things that I want. If AMD were to start selling gaming APUs with GDDR6, it means we can get much, much smaller form factors with much, much higher performance tiers. So that, that to me would be really exciting. And it's very clear that this is a market that is not being uh, saturated. This is a untapped market that AMD, Nvidia, or Intel could easily capitalize on. And AMD had, could have done this a while ago. Now, I know a lot of you guys, you're, you're typing on the keyboard going, well, Microsoft has a deal with them. They can't sell this. They could use Zen 1 and RDNA 2. Poof, it's not the same chip. Microsoft has no ground to stand on. They'll lose every court case ever. Um, you know, it can't be the exact same chip. That is correct. These are obviously harvested chips where... Something on the GPU uh, that doesn't have redundancy got hit with a defect, probably like a media encoder or just anything that does not have redundancy on there. So the GPU is basically worthless. They can't salvage it. So they're just fusing it off. But I'm talking about in general, this is a market that nobody 
is taking advantage of. AMD should have done this years ago. Um, obviously, once Zen hit, this should have been what they should have been focusing on, in my opinion. Discrete graphics cards, that's all well and good. I know a lot of you guys, that's your thing. You're on the one side of the camp. But there's an entire other spectrum of the market that has no interest in giant desktops with three or 400 watt TDP GPUs. They want something that's one or 200 watts. They want something that they could throw in a backpack and that plays all of their games just fine. The Series S and X or PS5, any of these new consoles are going to take care of that for the next few years. Um, ironically enough, this is also a missed opportunity for Microsoft as obviously they do have control of this chip. Uh, that's the reason why AMD can't sell the Zen 2 RDNA 2 Xbox chip as an APU. They'd have to come out with something else, either Zen 3 or maybe RDNA 2 with the Infinity Cache. It just has to be different. And once it's different, Microsoft can't tell AMD what to do with it at all anymore at that point. But Microsoft could literally just come out with an Xbox PC, sell the Series X and S at, you know, maybe an extra two or $300 because they'd have to make profit on them, you know, they can't sell them at a loss or a cost at that point, but for an extra couple hundred bucks and then allow Windows to be installed or come pre-installed with Windows. What would be even cooler is if it had a dual boot mode where you could boot into Xbox mode and play actual Xbox games, or you could boot into the desktop mode and then, you know, play all your desktop games. That'd be really great if you have games on Xbox, you wouldn't have to rebuy them on PC. I think that that'd be pretty cool. But anyways, that's a missed opportunity for Microsoft. This is a missed opportunity for AMD. I know that Intel, they're doing their NUC thing, which is kind of cool, but it's a very niche sort of device there with the RTX 2060, and it's $1,500. So it's prohibitively expensive. And honestly, it's just, it's expensive because it's niche and they're not gonna produce a lot of them. And that's because there's not a big community around there. Single board computers, I mentioned it before, Raspberry Pis. That's huge. That is a growing market. And AMD, Intel, or NVIDIA needs to figure out they need to come out with a single board computer that's built for gaming. So that means just enough CPU horsepower to do what you need and the biggest possible GPU with the most amount of GDDR you could throw on it at the highest possible bandwidth. That's where the expense should be coming in. You should be spending more on GDDR than GPU and CPU combined. That's kind of where, where the expensive part is. Sell that thing, I don't know, three, four, five hundred bucks. People come up with custom cool cases just like they did with the Raspberry Pi and just let the users out there have that option. We don't have that option right now. The Subor Z thing, I don't know if you guys remember that, came out. I think that was with Ryzen and I think it was Polaris or something on there. It was a very unique custom build thing that they had in China. It had eight gigabytes of GDDR5 on there. But that's the only other chip that I've ever heard of that AMD has produced. I think it had 16 CUs, if memory serves me right. Um, Digital Foundry did a video on it. They figured out eight gigabytes wasn't quite enough for general Windows use. So yeah, for me, it'd be great if AMD, Microsoft, whoever offered basically this board, and then you have, let's say an eight gigabyte model, just like the Series S, and then a 16 gig model, and then a 32 gig model, and then you just pay more money, just like you see on the Raspberry Pi. To me, that is the business model that one of these guys needs to figure out. That's a winning strategy. And then next year you do, you know, come up with a cool name with it and just do Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4, and then that'll just be a PC system requirement. You know, uh, Xbox PC, like I was saying before, I think that'd be a pretty cool uh, thing, you know, if they came out with that. So, you know, system requirement, Xbox PC Gen 1 for recommended or, or minimum, and then maybe Gen 2 becomes recommended or whatever. I think that that is an untapped potential of the market. And personally, I really was hoping that this would be the case. All the information I got last week did not mention that the uh, GPU, the iGPU was fused off. So I'm glad I waited on this video, did it today, as that makes a lot more sense. Um, you know, obviously AMD can sell Zen 2 CPUs and if Microsoft isn't going to use them, they, they might as well sell them. I wouldn't actually be surprised if we see a six core 12 thread variant coming out because if a series S or X has a core that gets hit with a defect, what are they going to do? Throw it out? 
Well, they can now fuse off the GPU and sell it as a six core, 12 thread, kind of all in one thing. Embedded solution. That's the proper phrasing. But anyways, I'm really interested to hear your guys' thoughts on this. I think that this is a really cool avenue for one of these guys to figure out that there is a market there. There's a huge market out there. Um, and with the way that PC gaming is going here in the past almost year now, we're, we're what, nine months into the point when you can't couldn't buy GPUs? It's getting a little ridiculous. I, I personally just see the DGPU market becoming so niche, it's almost irrelevant. I do see that this is going to be the future. It's just whoever pulls the trigger first, comes out with the right pricing and the right marketing strategy, they'll be the ones that win it. Now, obviously, NVIDIA, they're going to have to do it on ARM. That's going to be a problem if they can't come up with great ARM emulation because every x86 piece of software is going to need to run on that at least for gaming anyway. So all x86 games, all x86 emulators are going to need to be shifted over. That's not that big of a problem as most of them already support ARM, but it's going to be a bigger uphill battle for them. AMD and Intel could literally do this right now. Intel's obviously working on their graphics program, the new Tiger Lake uh, APUs, CPUs, whatever you want to call them. Those are pretty good. So Intel looks like they're getting there. Um, and AMD's had the technology, they could have done GCN and they could have done Zen 1. I mean, there's no reason why they couldn't have done a the 2400G or 3400G. It could have been, you know, four core, eight thread with 24 CUs or 32 CUs. That would have worked out just fine. As we know, AMD GPUs require less CPU hardware to run. Hardware Unbox figured that out. Four core, eight thread be more than enough. So, you know, 32 CUs, that's basically what, RX 470 level? Throw 8 to 16 gigs of GDDR5 on there. That would have been a seller, but they chose not to do that. Somebody's got to figure out that, that there is a market there. From all the comment sections I'm seeing, seems to be a big deal. I'm interested to hear your thoughts, though. Let's fill up this comment section. Let's let AMD know that there is a market for this. Not everybody wants big, discrete graphics cards. They'd rather have the whole system the size of an RTX uh, 3090 or the 6900 XT. I want my entire PC to be that size, but I want it to be as close to that performance as possible in that form factor. So if somebody can deliver that, I'd be very happy. If you guys would be interested in something like that, let them know, comment section. Also, once again, please like the video if you like these type of videos. That's really all I have for you guys here today. I'll catch you guys in the next video.